It's my first market watch video, so let's jump on into the pricing of cardboard, shall we? Hey guys, Otaku here, back with another competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! video, and this is a project that some of my friends have been trying to get me to work on for a while, and I'm finally doing it. What better way to do it than fresh off of a ban list? Market watch and like stock market and all that kind of shit never really been my cup of tea, really like looking at the pricing of stuff. I just kind of accepted what I was paying, even if it was bullshit. But this is something that my friends have been trying to tell me, yeah, I should do. A lot of people like to watch this kind of stuff. So I figured I'd give it a try. And not to mention, I do competitive Yu-Gi-Oh content. And honestly, the pricing of cardboard is kind of part of the competitive side of things. But before we do jump on into the pricing of shiny cardboard, I want to remind you all that about 80% of you that watch my videos are not already subscribed to the channel. And if you do like competitive Yu-Gi-Oh content, be sure to leave a like on this video. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already so I can continue to make videos like this one. But with that, let's jump into it. The first card I want to talk about is one that I think we're all kind of talking about is that grass looks greener. It came off the ban list. It's at one and people are very excited for this card. A lot of people are trying to counter argue saying that grass being at one in a 60 card pile deck is not really a high benefit right now because, you know, it's a one of in a 60 card pile. But we do have a lot of cards to search for. it. We have left arm offering. We have thrust now that we didn't have when grass first came out we have a lot of ways to still get to it and realistically if grass is resolving you probably are in a winning state at that point because you're playing a deck that wants your cards to get thrown into the graveyard not to mention branded players since they lost two branded fusion are probably picking up grass so they can play grass branded which you know they're already playing 60 card pile branded deck so why not throw grass into the mix but as for pricing the card has been like 10 15 dollars kind of jumping back and forth between that since it's printing since it got banned realistically uh hasn't been doing a whole lot it's just got one printing and raging tempest but when that motherfucker started getting suspected to come off the list it went up to like 18 20 bucks and then the list came out and it jumped up to like 30 35 40 even when there were buyouts as you can see here there are 109 purchases of this card right out the ban list gate uh well it says august 30th the list came out august 31st but like we all kind of it was all kind of the same point in time. We all knew this card was probably coming off the list in some manner. Um, yeah, this card, like you can see here, it went from 24 to like 55 overnight. It was very pricey, and now it's kind of stabled out. This card is about 26 27 bucks. It is a one-of, so I feel like $26 is probably worth it. We probably, one could possibly suspect this is getting a reprint in like the tins or the bonanza, maybe. Um, obviously it's not in any of the sets that were in the tins, like Raging Tempest isn't going to be in the tins, but we have seen cards get reprinted in the tins that weren't in those sets in the past, so this could be getting a reprint here real soon, just to bring it down. It also could just be in a future OTS. We never really know, um, or it's just going to continue to skyrocket in price. Another card I want to look at, and sure enough, here it is right at the bottom here, is Eva. Eva also came off the ban list. Um... Eva's a big boost to the Drytron deck, uh, and Drytron players cope a lot. Eva went from, like, pennies to two bucks. Like, penny stocks are kind of sitting here right now. Like, big benefit to the fact that, like, yeah, two dollars. So, if you have, like, a bunch of Evas just sitting in your bulk, honestly, this might be the time to, like, sell it. Because, like, you know, like I said, you can just kind of make a couple quick bucks out of this. Uh, it is a one of, and Drytron players are going to be playing it for sure, despite the fact that Beatrice is banned. There's a lot of ways to still get this into the graveyard. You can add it off Beatrice and then discard it off of Herald, and then this can search out Herald of Arclight, or not Arclight, Herald of Orange Light. Um, this is still pretty good. Another card for Drytron that hasn't been reprinted, and this is being affected by the fact that Eva has come back, and Drytron just recently got support in Infinite Forbidden. This card's fucking expensive now. Uh, Drytron Nova. This card went from like $15, $20. It's up to like the $28, $29, $30 mark now. It's just jumping in prices. It's getting bought out left and right. Uh, because Drytron players are coping again. Uh, the deck is good. It's consistent. The new support's pretty okay. Uh, it also got support a little bit back, too, I think, in the Duelist Nexus as well. This, this deck just keeps kind of getting support randomly, but this deck, this card's only been, uh, printed once, the Drytron Nova, and this is another card that maybe we'll see a reprint in, like, the Bonanza or the Tins for some reason. Like, the Tins are kind of a hit or miss on what we're going to get out of them other than the uh, pre-existing sets that are in them. Another thing I want to look at is the Dragon Rulers. So all the Dragon Rulers are finally off the list, and not only are they off the list, but they went from one to two on this list. 
and a lot of people are coping. Um, I've seen some like Dragon Ruler 60 card pile Tempai decks uh, with grass in it, which is interesting in of itself. But we got Redox, the secret rare at like five dollar market value. We got Title Secret Rare, ten to eleven dollar market value. Blaster at twelve to thirteen dollar market value. Tempest at three to four. From their all of their secret rares are like pretty up there. But need I remind you that you can kind of get all of them for pretty cheap. Like the rare from Tachyon Galaxy is like two bucks. The gold rare Tempest is pennies. The hell, even the super rare Tempest is pennies. Penny like Tempest is really cheap. Blaster was a common in the Fire King structure deck. Pennies. The rare from Title is three dollars. Like th these cards are pretty pricey. But if you want max value, then yeah, you're gonna be paying up the wazoo. Uh, even Blaze, the Supreme Ruler of all Dragons, which is getting played in that 60 card pile Dragon Ruler Tempai deck, uh, is up to like seven dollars now. But I don't know. I just don't see the Dragon Rulers doing a whole lot. Like the te I think the Tempai thing is kind of coping right now. We'll just have to wait and see if it actually performs at any sort of like high level event like regionals or YCSs. But I just don't foresee this doing much. Uh, I could see like Cash Dragon Ruler making a comeback for sure. Because the Dragon Ruler Cash deck was like a thing when uh, the last Dragon Ruler came off the ban list. So I could see it like maybe being something. As for cards that were not on the ban list, uh, obviously White Forest didn't hit the ban list because it is not an overly oppressive deck. It's a pretty fair deck uh, at rogue status. Possibly even better now that like some of the other decks in the format have kind of been toned down a little bit. Not by much, but a little bit. Is White Forest. Uh, mainly LZ. We're mainly looking at LZ. A stellar is not really doing much different, but LZ was originally the cheaper one, and a stellar was like the expensive one. When the Infinite Forbidden first came out, a stellar was like 30, 35 bucks, and LZ was like 20 bucks. But then Joshua Smith started playing the deck with the runic cards, and he made the determination that a stellar is not needed. And sure enough, we all kind of realized, yeah, she's not really needed, at least in the runic variant of the deck. And LZ. From there, became the expensive one. And she went from $30 before this ban list to damn near $40, $42. She's pretty pricey, and she's a three of. So if you don't have your copies, you might want to get them soon. But I would say maybe wait one or two more weeks for the ban list hype to kind of die down a little bit. Uh, I, don't think, I don't think she's worth $40 in my personal opinion. I love the White Forest deck. I think it's really cool what it does. Um, I'm personally still learning the deck myself. But I don't think this deck in its current status is worth what it's actually worth currently. So I'd say wait for the hype to die down a little bit or just like go to a regional, maybe find someone who is uh, maybe selling the deck for a little cheaper. The main card I really want to look at is Branded Fusion. So Branded Fusion got put from three to one on this ban list, which by the way, anyone who thinks Branded is dead clearly doesn't understand how Branded works. I've been seeing a lot of people in like the zoo chat and stuff saying Branded is finally dead and you really don't get how that deck runs, do you? Yes, at the end of the day, opening like the Branded Fusion is night and day a better like result than not seeing Branded Fusion at all. But nine times out of 10, you're not really resolving it because Ash Blossom exists and this is just the go-to card to Ash when you're playing against Branded. But the amount of times I've played Branded, because I'm I that's one of my main decks, the amount of times I've played Branded and not resolved Branded Fusion, still puppet locked my opponent, is uncountable. So yeah, if you think Brand's dead from only having one Brand Infusion, you really are coping. But we're primarily looking at the high rarity ones. I hate when a lot of Market Watch channels do this, is only look at the high rarity versions of the cards but at the same time like i can understand the the super rare and the secret rare aren't really doing anything the secret rare i think was like three bucks a little while back but now it's like a dollar but the ulti is uh is it's 18 dollars. it's affordable and now it's a one of but the list didn't really affect that all that much uh the list kind of didn't do much this card was already kind of on the decline especially when the qcr came out which by the way if you have the qcr and not the ulti i am judging you but this card kind of went from like 20 bucks and then the list came out and now it's like 15 16 and now it's come back up it's back up to 20 but if you're looking to play branded or you're looking to kind of max rarity out your deck i would recommend getting the ultimate rare version it is only 20 dollars. it is a one of so I, no real loss there but let's go ahead and take a look at the QCR, shall we? The QCR went from 
nothing. Like the QCR is the same price. It, it, there's this weird little divot here where I think just no items were being sold. Like no one bought a branded fusion for these three days, but like the, the ban list didn't affect this card. This card is still kind of sitting at a 70 to anywhere from 70 to $80 price point for the QCR. This isn't really doing anything, even though the list has put this card to one, it's still $80. And like I said, why pay $80 for a card that has glitter on it when you could pay $20 for something that actually has some sort of pattern design texture to it. A card I really want to look at is Appaloosa Boat of the Goddess, the Alt Art QCR from the Rarity 2. The reason I want to look at this is because, well, she got banned and I own this card. I did not buy it. I pulled this card and I was pretty proud when I pulled it, but I knew the moment I pulled it, I, I pulled it and I was like, oh, she's getting banned on the next list. Damn. The reason I thought that is because I pulled QCR Baron, and sure enough, QCR Baron got banned on the next list. So any high rarity cards I pull immediately get banned because I'm not allowed to be happy. But basically, she she's sitting at a $20 price point now, and for some reason, they're still gathering pricing data for her sales. But we, let's go ahead and take a look at the Starlight. So the OGR Appaloosa Starlight, sitting at about $400. This card, like like a week ago was like seven hundred dollars something like that like people started really selling this card because they were trying to get rid of it we all kind of thought this was going to get banned but yeah this is sitting at like a 450 price point now still still expensive shit because it's a starlight rare from rising rampage which the starlight rares were really hard to pull in that set if i remember correctly so it's still expensive but like three hundred dollars cheaper than it was that's a pretty that's a pretty good deal but four hundred fifty dollars for a banned card I just, if this card ever did come off the ban list in the future, you'd be making top dollar. The ban list sent Snake Eye Ash from a 3 to a 1, and because of that, you only need one Ultimate Rare Snake Eye Ash. And funny enough, we didn't see a dip. The Ultimate Rare Snake Eye Ash after the ban list has gone up in price, and I think it's because it is now a 1 of, so everyone's trying to get their 1 of copy. So retailers are just like, yeah, we can capitalize on the fact that everyone's trying to get their 1 of copy, of Snake Eye Ash Ultimate Rare. So 20 bucks. That's still pretty good, I think. The QCR Poplar is like 50 bucks now. I believe this is also going up. No, it is not. It actually dipped for the ban list. This card was about $55. QCR Poplar was about $55. Ban list came out and now it's about 48. And it's kind of plateaued out again. It's about 50, $52 again. So uh, we're kind of already seeing the hype of the ban list die down a bit so w there's a less ramifications all right we're gonna be looking at dia bell star and the reason for this is she's going up in price <laughs> um i don't get this i really don't get this we know dia bell star is coming out in the bonanza which i believe is november or december i can't remember which month but but she's in the bonanza it's confirmed she'll be in every possible rarity minus qcr because she's already in qcr they've already confirmed that she will not be in another qcr but I guess people are like, oh, the Dio Star engine with Wanted was not hit, which Wanted's getting reprinted in the tins at the beginning of September, aka this month. So a lot of people are just like, yeah, let's just buy our engines. I don't agree with this. I think it, unless you need this engine, like if you need it for a regional coming up, you know, obviously I understand. But if you don't need this card, if you don't need this engine before the reprint, just save your money. Like, honestly, this card's going to be fucking pennies after the Bonanza. But, yeah, she's going up in price. And we're not looking at the QCR because we don't have to. This is the Seeker Rare, and she's already up to, what, 40 bucks? Yeah, about about $40. She's going up after the ban list. The, the ban list dropped on August 31st. She was $36 a copy, and now she's, like, $40. She's gone up about 4 bucks. Uh, she did plateau at, like, almost 50 a little bit ago. I also, real quick, want to take a look at Fiendsmith Engraver, because I think this is kind of weird. Like, I guess it's not completely weird. It's a little understandable, but, like, come on, guys. So, a lot of people think that with Lacrima Band, the Fiendsmith engine is dead. And far from it, might I add. The Fiendsmith engine still pumps out bodies like candy out of a Pez dispenser, but also they can still just turbo out the Caesar, which is just the nib counter, and it's also just a counter to a lot of other decks. But Engraver went from like $90, like it, it's kind of slowly come down in price because we all, the ban list was coming. We all knew the ban list was coming. A lot of people were doubtful they were going to hit this engine. I only thought they were going to hit Beatrice and maybe Caesar. I didn't think they were going to actually hit Fiendsmith 
all this early on, but they went for Lacrima, and a lot of people think, think Engine is dead now. It went from, like, I think before the list, it was, like, $95, and then, like, August 31st came along, and it's still at $90, so it went down, like, 10 bucks, and now it's, like, 80 to $90, so it's kind of, again, come back up a little bit. As you can see on the graph here, he's kind of had an up-and-down spiral for the last month-ish, so it's not, like, super effective. Lurie's still, like, $8. And then the last card I want to look at is Salomon Great Raging Phoenix. So this engine, this OTK engine of Raging Phoenix and Zelantis was cut when the Fiendsmith engine came out because they could not fit it in the extra deck. They started siding Axis Code Talker as like a flex spot so that way they could go for OTKs when going second. But nah, now that the extra deck is open again, no Appaloosa, no Lacrima, and uh, no Beatrice, they got room again. So they've gone back to the Zelantis Raging Phoenix combo, and wouldn't you know it, August 31st, this card went from $18, and it is back up to $21, $25-ish. This card is, once again, a little higher in price, because they are going back to the OTK, uh, they're going back to the OTK strategy. So, this is annoying, I hated this strategy, and I, I still really hate it. I hate playing around Zelantis, because... Usually they don't make Zelantis until you've already exhausted your resources, so you can't negate Zelantis because you don't have anything to negate it. Um, because you're too busy trying to exhaust the rest of their resources and because Snake Eye is, well, Snake Eye, they're going to get to this regardless. But that is all I have for you guys today. Again, this was my first market watch, so, you know, cut me some slack. I'm still kind of learning how to do this, trying to find my own rhythm. But let me know what you all think in the comments below. But also maybe comment down below what I should take a look at on the next Market Watch. I'm not going to be doing these weekly. Uh, mainly just like impactful moments in the format where cards will be jumping in price. Or if cards are just jumping in price for random reasons. I'm not going to be doing weekly Market Watches by any means. But comment below what maybe I should take a look at next. But also don't forget to leave a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already. So I can continue to make videos like this one. And with that, I'll see you all in the next video. See ya.